Have any of you heard about the Difference Maker program yet? A few? Very good. Very good. All right. So we're going to take, we have about, a, I don't know, say 50, 55 minutes left, which is great. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to spend some time, we're going to have a little fun, we'll tell you more about the program, um, and I'm not going to talk the whole time. I actually have brought some students here who, who are difference makers, and they're going to spend a little time talking. And we're going to try to make this a little bit of fun, so you all know how to raise your hands, right? You're in high school, finishing up high school, so we're going to ask you some questions. I just asked, don't shout it out, raise your hand, um, and then we do have some prizes. So anyone know what movie that song was from? Yes? The Avengers. All right, what do we got, Talia? All right, all right, all right. Uh, let's see, a couple more. Any um, hockey fans here? Okay, so you all know our team was doing really well in the first half of the season. Last couple weeks have been a little tough, but, but we're going to get better. Um, okay, raise your hands. Anyone know um, who our mascot is? Let's see, I'll take some over this side. Yeah, shoot. Rowdy the Riverhawk. All right, very good. Very good. Okay, how about some camp? Have you toured campus? Y'all, did you? I saw any, anyone here who I spoke to this morning when I popped my head out of Difference Maker and showed you the light we had there? Yep, yeah, okay, very good. So, um, next question is how many campuses do we have at UMass Lowell? Way in the back there, yep? Yeah? Three. Three. Very good. Three campuses way in the back. Make sure that young man gets a Over this side, can you tell me what they are named? Let's see. Let me pick a woman. Yep, you young lady. Very good. Very good, Tali. You got her there? All right, so this is great. You haven't even started school here yet, and already you guys know your way around. You know who our mascot is. You know, um, well, clearly you've been watching some of the movies, so you got the Avengers. I love that song. That is a great song, isn't it? It's got nice and rousing and excitement. Okay, we're going to have some more questions for you, and we're going to give you a chance to ask some questions in just a few minutes. And I'm going to talk more about Difference Maker, but first I want to take five minutes to show you a video clip that um, I think really kind of gives you a sense of what this program is about. So let me crank this up, and I'll step aside. I'll let you watch that, and then we'll get started. Come back. Start it. Got me on the track. Start it from the bottom, now we're here. Start it from the bottom, now my whole team here. Yeah, start it from the bottom, now we're here. Start it from the bottom, now the whole team here. Start it from the bottom, now we're here. going out and taking that kind of risk, it's nice to have a support network behind you because I'm an engineering major. I have no idea what any of these business classifications that just got rattled off are. Um, and if I find myself in that position, I am going to be hopelessly lost and I am going to need to have someone to ask questions. So doing that, um, I have a sneaking suspicion my lab partners are going to wind up dragging me into something before the end of the semester. So this, this was a good opportunity. So, in a lot of cases where you see people who have had a limb blown off or had to be amputated due to an infection, they don't necessarily have the facilities to get the really high quality prosthetics that we can get here, but we want to provide them with a better option. It's difficult. So, so when you sprain your ankle, um, you're already on the crutches. You're already taking the crutches with you, but getting your leg elevated when you're like going from class to class or you're, you're at your job and there isn't an extra chair hanging around your desk, it can just be kind of awkward. I'm um, not sure which of the two ideas were on. So that we're the same sort of group. We came up with two projects and now we're duking it out and it's probably going to I'm Erin Keeney, uh, a senior in classics engineering in this mess. Okay. <laughs> well, this mess seems to know where it's going, so that's a good thing. Presented this idea 
quite a few times, but we really knocked out a lot of the kinks that we were having with it. So, so we talked to a lot of doctors, we talked to some distributing centers, I talked to a group that runs on Guatemala actually, and they were ecstatic about the idea of just having very cheap, easily producible limbs to, to distribute to kids. What's neat here is you guys have, over the last couple of months now, have refined this yes. a bit. So I know when you first came in, you had a couple of different ideas, you're mm -hmm. trying to figure out what problem. You've looked at the problem more closely, right? You've looked at what other people are doing to try to refine it. And I think that, that their concept um, is this whole discussion around serving the bottom of the pyramid, right? I'm ready. Hello, everyone. Today, we'd like to introduce to you a product that has the potential to change lives. Our goal is to provide the nurses, the doctors, the caretakers with a cheap and effective solution that will allow them to customize the prosthetic while keeping the cost down. It can change shape with the child. So, as the child is growing and developing, we can lengthen the limb, widen the limb, and increase the amount of time that they can spend on their feet or interacting with their world, and less time in the hospital getting fits and other such things. All right. Um, we've approached our idea to the Red Cross, um, Doctors Without Borders, and the Museum of Science, and they've all expressed interest and a willingness to participate with us should we create a prototype to give to them. Now, what we need are three things. First, we need time and funding. We also need awareness, so please, if you know anyone who would be interested in helping us with this venture, or if you're interested, please um, get involved. Thank you. So I fall back on the goals of Difference Maker, which were to engage our students in creative problem solving, coming up with innovative solutions around problems that matter. Um, and so the group that won the uh, most significant campus-wide Difference Maker Award is the Developing Nation Prosthetic. And that's a $5,000 award that will be used to help them implement their project. Yeah. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now we're here. $5,000, that's what got them started. Um, that team, uh, let me see, they're in graduate school now. And they were in this room six years ago, like you, in high school, wondering what they were going to do in college. And they did a lot of interesting things, right? They took engineering classes, they took business classes, they met health science majors. And around their junior, senior year, they got this idea for this device. Um, and they started to build it. And when they first built it, it was very complicated. Originally, they were going to develop a very robotic, com complicated device. But then they started to do some research, and they realized that the real issue was in developing countries, right? Where kids and families could not afford complicated, expensive prosthetic arms. So instead, they flipped their idea, or pivoted, is the term we use, they pivoted, and instead, they built a low-cost prosthetic. Now, I saw someone remembered me from this morning. Who was that? Do you remember what limb it was that I held up? The right, it was the lower leg. Very, Polly, we have a prize for her. So this, their idea started as, an arm, as a hand. It morphed into an arm. And then they actually have just returned from India. They were in India for two weeks where they were piloting usability of that leg rapid prototype 3D printed leg that could actually sustain somebody and walk. And their goal is to bring that to market for $35. $35, prosthetic device costs thousands. Their goal is to bring it back. So that's what Difference Maker is about. They're a great example of what our UMass Lowell students do. So the Difference Maker program, it's really an effort on our campus. We know that this university will do a great job giving you a good professional education. Whether you're a science major, you want to be an education major, psychology, fine arts, engineering, business, we have great faculty, we have good academic programs, they're all accredited programs. We have very successful alumni, I believe we have 65,000 alumni, people who've graduated from this college, and many, many of them have gone on to very successful careers. In fact, it's one of the reasons why this program exists, because they donate money to support the $35,000 we gave away last year. And so, what we want to do is ask a little bit more of you. We want to teach you a set of skills around creative problem solving, innovation, and entrepreneurship that'll let you change the world and address some of the big problems that exist in the world. So we're asking a lot of you. We know we're asking a lot of you, but it's because we have total faith in the millennials, right? People would say, I was interviewed by the Boston Globe last week, you know, and for a while, young people are getting a bad rap, 
and that this reporter said to me, so talk about these millennials. I said, you know, they're fascinating. I said, they really want to solve problems. Yeah, they learn differently than us. They might listen to different music, and they, get, they all think they can multitask, which you really can't. But I'll, we'll argue about that in class. Um, but they want to change the world. And so our job here, and Difference Maker's job, is to help give you the tools you need to do that. And we're really counting on that. So that's really what the program is about. So we're going to introduce you to creative problem solving. We'll focus on linking your education, regardless of what discipline you are in, to helping us to solve problems that matter. So who are the difference makers? Well, we just watched a little clip where you got to see um, the non-spec team. Uh, and basically, they're students like you, uh, mostly undergraduate students. Um, when we do our competition, we have a big idea challenge event. It's, not, it's actually started already. We're accepting applications. And in April, we'll have a preliminary event. We anticipate there'll be somewhere in the vicinity of 200, 250 students that will participate in that. Uh, they'll go through the workshops, and then we'll work with them to get them ready to pitch these ideas to a panel of alumni who put, donate these funds. We'll probably have somewhere between 40 and 50 teams pitching at the preliminaries. It's really a lot of fun. Um, and then we'll narrow that down to 10 teams. So 10 teams will be in the final pitch contest. And then the judges will decide how the $35,000 is going to be divided up amongst those teams. But it doesn't end there. We don't just give people money. What we'll do then is we'll bring those students into a summer workshop. They'll have their funding. And we'll help them think about, OK, how do you actually make that prosthetic leg? Or how does our good friend Savannah get her food truck out into the market? Or how does Roger get his software accepted by the App Store? So we'll sit down and we'll do some work with folks over the summer, and the goal is to move them forward. Now what's exciting, that video clip that we just watched of Nonspec, we seeded them with $5,000. They went on to raise another $125,000 in contests around the country, and actually they won an international contest. Now, a little secret, um, my boss brought me in and asked, talked to me about this program, we got it started and wanted to know about this metric and that metric. But my personal goal was for our students to go out and beat the teams from MIT and Harvard. Now, I'm sure some of you are considering those schools right now, and I understand that. They're very prestigious. But the first event that Nonspec went to was an uh, International Association of Plastic Distributors event in Florida. They pitched against the team from Harvard, and they beat them. And then, just a few weeks ago, they went down into, I think it was at Northeastern, had a big pitch event last fall. And they were up against the teams from MIT, Babson, Bentley, you name it. They pitched against all of them. They came in second place. And just like last night, they were beat by that team from BU, which we're going to work on next year. So, but what it means is, it's, that says a couple things to me. It says to me that our UMass Lowell students are on par with graduates from any of those colleges and that they have a special something that allows them to solve problems, come up with solutions, and convince people to put money into it. And so ultimately, when you want to save the world, you've got to come up with some funding. So how do we do this? We do it in a lot of different ways, but we use a really simple method, right? Problem, opportunity, solutions, resources. Are any of you worried about climate change? Any of you? A few? Yeah, yeah. Anybody worried about, um, let's see, climate change, terrorism, war? Some people worried about war. Anybody worried about, anyone have their bank account or their Facebook account hacked? Are you worried about people hacking into your security systems and such? Uh, is anybody worried about how they're going to pay for gas in their car? Uh, a few hands. So, I, Mention those problems because the way we start Difference Maker is by working with students around problems that they care about, problems that are important to you. We don't identify the problems. We don't define them. We'll help you to define them, to get a better sense of what they are. And the reason we do that is if you're going to solve a big problem, if you're going to help change the world, you have to be passionate about it. You have to care about solving that problem. This isn't homework. In fact, most of the work we do in Difference Maker doesn't happen in the classroom. It happens outside the classroom. Now, we bring the classroom into Difference Maker, and the teachers and your professors are part of that. And they may talk about some of the things you need to know in order to solve those problems. 
but it's, it's sort of a, uh, a co-curricular program that we roll out across the entire university. Every, if you decide to come here, and I hope that you do, every freshman that comes here this summer participates in an orientation activity with Difference Maker. And we go into a problem solving activity where you'll do some pitching and we'll actually give away prizes and such. When you come back for a freshman convocation, that's the day before classes start, that we get all the freshmen together, we'll have a pitch contest there and let you text vote to give away $3,000. You'll decide who gets the money, right? So we put our time and our money behind this effort because we think that you really can solve these problems. And I'll tell you, I've traveled around the country. I've done a lot of speaking at a lot of schools. I work at a lot of universities. There's not many places, not many universities in the country that do it on the scale that we do it. There's one in our neighborhood, Babson, that actually requires students as freshmen to do some sort of innovation project. But other than that, there's very few. So it's a problem. We look into the opportunity associated with solving that problem. So who's affected by it? How big is the problem? How else have people tried to address it? You get to work with other people. You learn more about that opportunity. And then we start brainstorming solutions. And we have a whole process with that. In the back is my good friend, Professor Ralph Jordan. Professor Jordan, will you give him a shout out, please? <laughs> Professor Jordan, you'll meet Professor Jordan more this summer if you decide to come here. He's great at helping us walk through these ideation activities and helping us to solve these problems. And resources is the last thing. And this is the great thing that we've learned. We call UMass Lowell a bootstrap university. And what that means is we weren't always um, we weren't always the beneficiary of a lot of state funding or a lot of donor money, right? So we had to figure out how to make this a great school. And we pulled ourselves up by our bootstraps. And that's what good entrepreneurs do, right? They pull themselves up by their bootstraps, and that's how they gather resources. So we'll help you figure out how to gather those resources. And there are many different types of resources out there. And then it's time to solve that problem. So what are some of the things that we offer? We actually offer a lot more than this, but poor Holly, she had them all on the slide, and I said, Holly, it's too much. We've got to thin this out a little bit. Um, so we have a space. Some of you saw a Difference Maker Central this morning, right? It's in a great location on North Campus, right next to Starbucks. So when you go and get your cup of Java, you can stop in, you can say hi to Holly and Harry, you can say hi to the Difference Maker Enterprise Co-op students, the students that work there. But in that space, once you come into the Difference Maker program and you get into the pitch contest, we give you access. So you have card access to that space. And there are computers, there are whiteboards. There's a lot of traffic, a lot of people moving in and out of that space, sort of sharing ideas and working together. So we have that. We have a mentor program. So Holly, this is Holly in the background. Holly Butler is the program director for Difference Maker. And let me see, I'll give you a couple more introductions. Talia is a junior, right, in the business program. And Hannah was Hannah. Hannah is a freshman in which program, Hannah? Business. Business, all right, sorry. And then Zach is behind the camera. Zach just graduated, but he's coming into our graduate program. And then we've got uh, Rohit and Savannah with us. And they're going to come up and they're going to talk in just a minute. So we involve students. And I think I told this story to the group that stopped by Difference Maker Central and talked about resources. So um, the students here, they're, they're enterprise co-op students. So what that means is they get paid to work with us, right? So we take some of that alumni donation money, we set it aside, and we hire these students. And like Talia is the social media queen, right? We have a Twitter account. Uh, it's at difference underscore UML, right? She's constantly up on there tweeting away. So we bring students on and not only do you have your startups, but you also have a chance to work with us. And we bring in mentors, our alumni, our, our mentors, people from the community. These are folks who've started businesses, who've solved problems, who work in nonprofit organizations. They want you to succeed. And they volunteer to work with you to help you figure out how to solve those problems. So it's really exciting. Um, we have workshops. The uh, non-spec team in that video was talking about the workshops. We're going through those workshops right now. Holly and Howard are trying to get me to do four of them, and I tell them, no, no, I can only do two, but we'll work that out. So, but the workshops, the idea is to kind of teach you the skills that you need to implement your idea. And then finally, there's funding. And I said $35,000, but um, it's, we actually probably end up giving away a lot more than that over the course of the year, because there are, last fall, we had three different events. We had a uh, business school pitch contest. We had an engineering prototype contest, and then we had a big contest in fine arts, humanities, and social science. 
I think we gave around ten or fifteen thousand dollars away at that event, and then we followed up with our big event where we gave thirty-five thousand dollars away. And then there are other events at other places that we keep you all in, in, in the loop on so that you know about it. So think about this. What I'm saying to you is if there's a problem that you want to solve, this university, the faculty, the staff, fellow students, is committed to helping you solve that problem. And we'll give you the education you need to do it, but then we'll also spice it up a little bit with activities like the Difference Maker program and these pitch contests and such. So you already saw the, um, the uh, non-spec uh, team. They, they originally started, their name was Developing Nation Prosthetic. At one point, they became non-spec. Um, when they graduated, they actually decided to form a company, so the university helped them to form a company, and then we helped them to file a patent on that. So they have a patent on this technology, and this has allowed them to go out and win an additional $120,000, $25,000. So this team is taking off. Um, we have the Difference Maker Central space, but we also have, we have other spaces around campus. We're opening up, uh, anyone heard of uh, maker spaces? Some of you engineering folks. We, we're building a maker space, and that, what that is, is that's a space where students can go and use 3D printers and equipment to actually build things. Uh, and then we have incubators where we start businesses. So this team will eventually be moving into there. The other, so they were campus-wide difference maker in 2013. And then just to let you know that these aren't just engineering projects, we have another team to support our students which won the uh, 2014 campus-wide difference maker event, and they're focused on addressing issues of student hunger, which many of us didn't realize was a problem, right? Because if you're in a dorm, you have a meal plan. So there's, you have to have a meal plan. There's no choice about that. But we're only about 50% uh, residential students, which is great. But that means there's 50% students who come from other areas. Well, what we didn't realize is that some of those kids, especially the, the ones that are living on their own, might not have, they have to make a choice between putting gas in their car or paying their rent or paying an electric bill or buying food. So this team raised this problem, they pitched it, and what they're doing is they're not just giving away money, but they're building an organization that's actually traveling around the state right now that's working with other colleges and other college campuses to raise awareness of this issue and then to help people solve it. And the really great innovation that came out of this team is they convinced our caterer, Aramark, which is a big multinational company, around, they do catering around the world, they convinced them to create a mail bag, meaning any of you that come here and live in the dorms or have a mail plan, you can donate one mail from your mail plan. That mail plan goes into a mail bag, and then students can um, discreetly reach out to SOS and get a mail card that allows them to pull a mail out without being um, ostracized about it. So it's really kind of exciting. And so you can see the last group was engineers and a business. This is marketing, finance, community psychology, computer science. So the other strength of what we're trying to do here is pulling you together. So even though right now you're just thinking about your major and how <coughs> well you're going to do when you get here, in order to be successful, you have to learn a little bit about other majors and disciplines. And you have to learn how to work with those people. And you don't have to worry about that right now, because we will absolutely help you to do that. Um, Holly and the web office team have created a program called Team Maker that allows students to enter projects into it. And other students called Seekers say, uh, I'm looking for a project. Let me go in and look and see what other things are out there. This is all part of our community here. So I think what I'd like to do now is um, bring up um, Rohit, uh, who's going to talk about his project Hive. And so you've got a few minutes. Come on up, come on up. Yeah, and, uh, you've got a few minutes, and then I will um, probably ask you some questions. I'll say, yeah. Do you want to hold it or not? I can hold it. All right, good. Hey, guys. Uh, so I'm Rohit. Uh, I'm currently a junior year student here uh, at UML, and I'm currently pursuing a double major in computer science and electrical engineering. Um, that was a recent change. It says computer science there. But um, yeah, so. I'm from Hive, uh, so um, I'll give you a little selfish pitch about what Hive is. Uh, how many of you guys have used uh, like Microsoft Word, uh, Google Docs, or Evernote? Yeah, a lot of you, I know. Um, so uh, basically, if you've noticed, um, we're in the 21st century, and uh, word processors aren't very contextually aware. So you write something about Muhammad Ali, it won't be able to disambiguate between 
Muhammad Ali, the ruler in Egypt, and Muhammad Ali, the boxer. So we sort of wanted to void that gap and be able to have, as you take notes, uh, get suggestions from the foremost of resources, uh, such as Khan Academy, Chegg, Wolfram Alpha. Um, these are resources that you guys will be using in college, um, whether you're an engineer or bio major, anything. So that's like the very high level uh, current state of affairs. Um, but it didn't really begin that way. So um, freshman year, uh, we were just a bunch of computer science uh, students. And I had this idea of maybe taking notes in the classroom, and then it'll be able to record a professor. So as you're taking notes, it'll also be recording. So when you play back the recording, it'll play back your notes. So you kind of know the state of your thoughts as you're writing. Um, but I sort of discussed this with my friends, and they said, hey, uh, why don't you change things and uh, pivot? So pivot's like a very uh, loose word for this, because it's completely changed. And that's basically the impact that Difference Maker has. Um, we didn't really join for the money. Um, it was more of, we wanted to know who we are. Um, there's a lot that can change in a year. Um, and that initial app that I made, um, I called it a beta. But beta was like such a strong word for uh, such a loose prototype. So um, yeah, uh, presently, uh, we're working with Wolfram Alpha to have a partnership going on. So additionally, we're working with universities, uh, such as UMass Lowell, to um, incorporate this as part of um, the existing infrastructure. So um, you guys might be familiar with uh, Blackboard. A lot of universities use it, and uh, UML uses it as well. So this will be very similar. And yeah, that's basically the idea. Hello? Okay. All right, well, so first of all, let's hear it for Rohan. Um, so you're a junior now, and how many people are on your team? Yeah, so we have presently five people in the team. Uh, none of us, well, I'm a computer science major. Uh, Eric, our CTO, is computer science, but um, Nafi, for example, is a mechanical engineer, so you don't necessarily have to be um, computer science in order to do uh, an app. So a team kind of consists of a diverse uh, group of people. So Brian is a business major. Uh, Santiago is a comp sci major, but he's handling the business affairs. So we all take this as an opportunity to um, learn new things. Like I didn't consider this to be a business venture when I started it. It was more of like, I'm going to make an app on a snow day, uh, pull in a hackathon, all later kind of thing. Um, but it changed. Yeah. Okay, so I have a couple more questions, but I'm wondering, do you guys have any questions at all? And we do have prizes for people who ask questions, I'm just saying, in case you need a difference making a water bottle or something. Okay. Well, if you come up with it, how many engineers are in here? And I see a few women engineers in there. Excellent. How about um, computer science? Science, okay. <laughs> business, how about business? Very good. Okay, don't, you other majors, don't worry. I'm going to come back to you in, in the next round here. So. Okay, so let me ask you, um, what was the biggest surprise when you started doing this? Um, so we sort of... We didn't practice this, you can see. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I don't have very much practice. But, um, it was more of just looking back now, it's crazy how much things have changed. Um, for instance, we saw that poster for Difference Maker the first year, and we wanted to take this app to like, just see where it goes. Um, it was more of a venture, like an incubation kind of thing, um, where we could throw our ideas at it and see where things go. It was like an experiment. And it kind of went well. Um, so that was the biggest surprise, I think, that 
things change so much? So what's exciting for me, because I've been at the university a very long time, but Difference Makers is about three years old. So you entered as a freshman, and you pitched that idea in front of the full judges, right? Yeah, and about 150 people. Yeah. But the idea has evolved, and now you're a junior, and you're coming back in, right? Yeah. You're going to pitch again. Yeah. So what, what's, what's going to happen afterwards? Um, what's next? So we're currently, actually, uh, one of the things that Wolfram wanted was, uh, we have to, there's a lot of... Do they know, do you know, all know who Wolfram is? Oh, how many of you guys have used Wolfram Alpha? All right, so... So this is a big company, right? A big software company that they work with. They made uh, Mathematica, uh, Wolfram Alpha. Um, so they're like a website where you can type in your equation and they give you uh, results. So one of the things we wanted in our app was you take notes on... Um, say a really big equation on superconductivity. Uh, left side of the equation doesn't match the right side. Uh, we'll look it up on Wolfram in the background and then give you uh, topical suggestions on how you can improve that. So, like if there's a graph, you can drag the graph right into your notes. Uh, how many of you guys have tried to like put a graph in Microsoft Word? You have to go through like a hundred different steps. Um, so, yeah, that was. Like all these little things, um, they add up. So you gotta ask yourself, like when you have an idea, um, what are those little things that stop you? Um, that could be one of the small things. Excellent. All right, we're gonna have more questions for you, but let's hear it, and we'll bring up Savannah. Now. So Savannah Marshall is uh, in our graduate program now. She was an undergraduate in, um, Community music or music education? Music education. Music education. Mm -hmm. And I'll let you tell them about your idea, and then I'm going to ask you some questions. Okay, great. Thank you, Steve. So, hello. Um, it's really my pleasure to be here right now, and they didn't ask me to say this at all, but I just get really fired up about the difference makers, so I'm just really happy to be here. So, um, a few things about my experience in the difference makers program has been a little bit unconventional, so I want to share that with you now. So, um, I've been here at UMass Lowell now for six years. I did my undergrad here, as Steve said, in music education, and I double majored in psychology. So right off the bat, you might recognize that I wasn't an engineering student, I wasn't a math student, I count on my fingers, and I play the drums. So my experience here is a little bit different. Um, so I did my undergrad here, and I stayed for the graduate program now in community music. Not really sure what I wanted to do still. You know, I'm sure, raise your hand if you're sitting in this room and you're not totally sure what you want to do with the rest of your life. Oh, but the rest of you figured it out? Wow, that's, I'm so envious of you, that's awesome. So when I graduated though, and I was a grad student here, I still didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I was able to identify the things that I'm passionate about. So for me, there are three things, and you might be able to a little bit see them on that triple Venn diagram, but I'll lay them out for you. Music, I studied music, I wanna play the drums. Um, and education, I studied music education, so I really like giving private lessons, I like um, teaching large ensembles, and I just enjoy education in general, so I wanted to continue being a grad student. And uh, food. Anybody big on food around here? Yeah, SOS and I, we had a lot to talk about because I'm a big foodie myself. So I decided, you know, I have these three passions, but now I need to identify the problem. You know, maybe there's a need, maybe there's something I can do with my life that's gonna, you know, um, unify these three areas, and maybe I can do something important. Maybe I can make some positive change through those. And so my idea is Fresh Beats. So it's going to be a food truck, but it's also going to be a music venue. So imagine the food truck rolls up, maybe right outside the ICC, and we're right downtown Lowell. And off the back of the food truck, a stage is going to fold down. And every time the food truck goes up, there's going to be a live band playing off the back of it. Pretty decent, right? I just think that's a fun idea, and I would like to do that. But more though than being a fun idea, there really is a need for that in Lowell. So is anybody native to Lowell? Anybody live here? Cool, all right, a couple of us, a couple of neighbors. Hello, how you doing? Um, so there's not too much in Lowell that, you de I, that, excuse me, that unifies food, music, and education, except for this festival that comes in once a year called the Lowell Folk Festival. And if you've ever been to Lowell, if you've ever been around in the summer, you should definitely check it out. It's this really wonderful event that brings those things together, but there's really no chance for, say, you know, uh, an eight-year-old taking guitar lessons to have a chance to have a public performance. And there's really no chance for anything like that to happen, even outside of the Greater Lowell area, so I decided to do something like that. So um, I was introduced to the Difference Makers program 
because of one of my grad classes. So I didn't even really notice many of the Difference Maker flyers or emails or really anything I was getting just as being a student. But in one of my grad classes, it was called um, Arts Administration and Marketing. So the whole point of the class was just think of an idea for a nonprofit that you might like to do in music or in arts or whatever, and then follow through on the steps. So, you know, we're going to make a business plan. We're going to handpick a board of directors. And it was kind of a hypothetical exercise. But then the final for our class was to pitch our idea to the Difference Makers team. And they thought it was a pretty good idea, and they suggested that I uh, do the uh, idea challenge that you heard about. So I did the idea challenge, made it all the way through to the end of that, and the panel of judges thought that Fresh Beats was a good idea too, and so I was awarded $4,000 for that, which was the coolest moment in my life and also the scariest moment of my life because what was just an idea and what was just kind of a final project for me and I thought it was an interesting idea suddenly became, here's all this money, you can do it. And I was like, really, you think so? I don't know, like I'm really not sure. So that's where I'm at right now in my stage with the Difference Makers is um, I've done a couple of other events with them. I want another uh, $1,000, so I'm up to $5,000 in total. And so now I'm working with a mentor. Um, he was the same mentor that I had in that graduate class, so he helped me think of the idea, he watched me do my final pitch, and now he's my official mentor. So we're working together for about six months and he's gonna help me put together a business plan, um, kind of like a press kit in such a way that I'd like to have you know, a diagram of that food truck with a music venue hanging off of it. And I'd like to identify the different community music centers that are gonna um, help students come together and give them lessons for free and all the different food that I might wanna work um, to sell, all the different farms that I might wanna work with to source food from so the food can be local and um, responsibly raised. And that's it, so I'm basically in the stage of, I had the idea, I was given some money, and then I got a little bit scared. But my favorite part about the Difference Makers program is that the support doesn't end when they give you the money. They really do help you to you know, make your idea incredibly actionable because you, know, you might be sitting here now thinking, you know, what idea do I have that's actually going to make a difference? And they believe that we can. And then they help us to support our ideas even further. So thank you. And then I chuckled though when Savannah said that her idea was a bit unconventional, as if as if you couldn't guess that, right? Right, I know. I didn't have to say anything. Any que any questions first before I start? Yeah, way in the back. Oh. Let me run this back. Um, I was. Oh wow. <laughs> I know. I know. It's louder, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I was wondering how you went about getting a mentor. Um, did the Difference Maker program just like assign you a person to work with, or did someone just approach you and just like, hey, I liked your idea, I want to help you with it? I've had both experiences, actually. Thank you for asking that. In my case with the mentor, it was the teacher who I had in class um, and we incubated the idea together. So he became my mentor because he volunteered. But if I didn't already hand select somebody who I wanted to be my mentor, the Difference Makers would have hooked me up with somebody who they thought I was compatible with. But I've also met various faculty members um, at the university who thought my idea was interesting and I've had meetings with um, different professors about my idea who I didn't know before. So it's been a little bit of all three. Great, Great question. What's your major? Uh, nursing. Nursing. Okay. Very good. And Tali's going to go. Oh, Polly's going to come. Any other questions for Savannah? Oh, right here. Hi. With anybody else, any other students more than just the I, faculty? Actually, no. So it's another way in which I'm convention un unconventional, I suppose. I'm not, were there any other idea challenge winners that were just one man shows over there? I think I was the only one at the idea. It's rare. Yeah, it's, it's rare. rare. Yeah. You had a question down there? Uh, yeah. You want to shout it out? Yeah, sure. Uh, so party band okay so I'm, in, I'm, I'm a music musician right I play the drums so I'm in this community band called the party band and um, my nickname in the party band is fresh beats and that nickname actually came before the idea of the food truck music venue so that's kind of an interesting tie-in but um, 
I, th I think they were kind of unique. And I realized that the folk festival was the only thing that united food, music, and education, but that really wasn't a consideration of the party band. That Fresh Beats was, though, but that's funny you say that. Great. Did I see another back here? Yep. What type of food do you sell? Is it like beets? <laughs> yes. All right. So Fair question. it's it's weird to think that I'm still a little on the fence about what kind of food I'm going to serve. But what I do know is that I want it to. Um, it, it's going to be vegetarian without coming out and saying, "Hey, we're a vegetarian place." It's going to be very appealing to you know people who like to eat all kind of things. So it's it's going to be vegetarian. It's going to be locally sourced. So I spent last summer working for Mill City Grows. They're an urban farming organization in Lowell. So I just got dirty for 30 hours a week and planted a lot of beets. And I've learned how to make a lot of different things with beets. So I make this beet hummus. I was hoping to try like beet falafel. Um, so some items are going to have beets in them, but we're going to have a lot of different puns. Not just beets. Jam sessions. Not just beets. Not just beets. Oh. Right, again, because that's not appealing. expert business perspective. That's not appealing to everybody. Listen, you guys have great questions, so let's, yep. My takeaway, so I'm still very much in the process, but my takeaway is that um, you might believe that you have a good idea, and it's not crazy to think that other people might also think it's a good idea. And you shouldn't get scared by that, you should get really excited by that. So to have the courage to talk about something, because I've had this idea on my mind for years and years and years, and it was only because of the class that I started working on conceptualizing it and, and carrying it forward, and then from receiving money and support from the difference makers that I'm here today still doing it. But if you have an idea, you should talk to somebody about it who has some power and has some know-how, and they might like it, and you should do it. Take away. I, and I'm going to step in on that one for a minute, because for, for two reasons. First of all, ideas are wonderful, right? We all have ideas. But unless you do something about it, yeah. it's just an idea, right? And so what this program is about, what your UMass Lowell education is about, is really taking these ideas and giving you the opportunity to do something of substance with it. But uh, Savannah, he, I, I, want, I want to go back to his question. Okay. Because you kind of did have a crisis, right, this past year. Um, you graduated, yeah. you're like, oh no. Yeah. And how'd we really back in? How'd we really, well, <laughs> the, the mentor program was really so helpful. So I did, I had, I had crisis mode, I had all this money, and still a lot of support from the difference makers, but I was like, wait a minute, I'm 23 and in grad school and I'm not ready to start a business. I was just pumping the brakes and I was just getting really scared, but I believed that the idea was good and it was something that I wanted to do. And so I just called a meeting with Steve and with Holly and with my mentor, who is now my mentor, and we just sat at the round table and they gave me some help and we put together this formal mentorship program. So we outlined some goals, You know, we outlined what my summer might look like, and they just helped me to make it real again rather than it being in ideal land. So that was really and helpful. that wasn't painful, was it? It wasn't that painful. <laughs> I'm here now. We're good. Any other questions? Yep. It's hard to reach you here, but I can reach you folks in the middle. <laughs> How big would the truck have to be to like fit like a stage and like food? I know. I'm just wondering. There's a, I'm so I'm trying to here. I'm gonna throw it out to you guys. I, I need some help. I need somebody to do some conceptual drawing for me. So I'm thinking it might be a 16 or 20 foot truck, and then the stage might fold off the back. But I did recently just see a food truck, and it had a very solid top, and I thought how cool it would be for the stage to be on top of the truck. But then I'm like, I don't know how the fumes are gonna be ventilated. So I'm gonna work with somebody on that, but I think it's gonna be fairly large. Another, uh, not to, I'm gonna go into it because you asked me. Another thought is that it could be a pickup truck, and it might be like food trailer, and the stage could be the bed of the pickup truck. So that way they can, you know, disengage, and I can leave the food, and I can drive the truck. Yeah. So I'm working on a couple of ideas like that. Still a little conceptual, but thank you for asking. Excellent. Oh, more. Okay. Burn. You guys are making this easy for me. Thank you. So is this going to be like? Oh, Jesus. Hi. <laughs> so is this going to just just be there for the Lowell Folk Festival, or is this going to be like an ice cream man type situation where you drive around? It's funny that you say that because I think it should be an ice cream man situation. Um, it's not going to be just for the Lowell Folk Festival. In fact, the opposite. So we have all these things coming together for one special occasion in a weekend in the summer, and then it's gone. So my hope is that it's going to be in Lowell um, spring, summer, fall, and then 
honestly, I don't want to work on the food truck in the winter. Like, outside right now serving lunch, I don't want to do it. So it's going to be um, safe enough and sturdy enough that it can actually go on the road and be kind of like a tour bus. And it's going to go down the East Coast and it's going to partner with farms all along the way and partner with community music centers so that we can source their food, give their students a gig for about two weeks and then go to another city down the way. And then it'll probably spend a couple of months somewhere really warm like Miami or maybe Austin, Texas. And then I'll come back because I'm going to miss you guys. It's not, it's not like a pretty nice business opportunity to me. Yeah, thank right. you. It supports your interest in traveling. Yeah, Very so that's good. what I did. I, just I bet you might collect a couple partners here today. Yeah, you're all welcome to join. It's a one-man show. It's getting a little bit lonely. So if anybody has any interest, I'd be really happy to talk to you. Did you have a question? Yeah. Have you found any uh, notable difficulties being the only person on your team? A million. <laughs> like what? Like, like staying motivated, honestly. Because I think if you're in a team setting, even if you're just working on a project in school, and you know, you've got to get your piece done to the group, there's an accountability there. Um, and there's definitely a sense of support, and so kind of when I'm by myself, I think it's a good idea, but sometimes I don't follow through in the way that if I had um, expectations by my peers that I might perform that well. So th that's been challenging. And I don't know how to cook that well, so I wish I had a uh, consulting chef. And I don't know how to run a business because I play the drums. So there's a lot of things I'm missing. You should have had you bring your drums. I should have. Well, next, my body is strong. I'm not going to cut you off yet, but I'm wondering, are there any questions for Rohit? Any computer science engineering guys or gals have any questions for him? Thank you. Oh, oh, good. Come on up to the stage. Cool. We've got a couple for you. I was wondering about um, how specifically, is it like an app or like a plug-in for like Google Chrome or something like that? Yeah, so it started as an app. Um, so I mentioned like it was a snow day and I just made an app. But I sort of talked with a few friends, and um, our CTO was uh, a little skeptical. And he said, people are a little lazy. They don't like to download things. So um, we kept it as a website. Uh, so hivelabs.it, you can check out like a video of it uh, working. Uh, it's functionally ready, um, but we're just like working out the kinks on the business side of things. Uh, so. It's like Facebook, it's like a website. You can just go to it and it works. Is there another question up here? Um, yeah, do you use like a, a, a certain programming language or uh, just a software or something like that? Yeah, so um, I'm pretty avid. Uh, are you a comp sci person? Uh, okay, um, I use Node.js. Uh, that's like the language that I use. Um, it's JavaScript based. Uh, initially, our backend was made in Java, uh, but uh, it got a little clunky. So we started over a lot of times. There were many iterations, um, and now we're growing with Node.js. So look at this, right? We, we shared the science, techie, engineering ideas. We shared the community, uh, music, social science, finance ideas. Difference maker really is it's a very broad spectrum. Yep, you got a question? Let, let me repeat that so everyone can hear. So the question was, from a business perspective, who's your target customer? Is it a school? Is it an individual? Is it a company? That was like our scariest question. Um, to be honest, like early on, we were genuinely unsure who were who we were trying to appeal to. But uh, now, I would say it would be universities. So um, they have a full stack already ready. So we would be partnering up with. Um, various providers, like knowledge engines, such as Chegg and Wolfram Alpha, and the university would be able to choose who uh, they want to give that access to. So um, maybe engineering students would want Wolfram Alpha, and then the bio students would want to use Google Freebase um, as the database. And they can sort it out, and we would have analytics figure out what the best uh, options are in that front. Uh, why not come up on stage with me, Savannah? So let's hear it for these two students. Hi. I hope you've underscored that UMass Lowell is a different place. We're going to give you a different type of education. And when your parents ask what you were doing, you can tell me how you take some place to test or something. <laughs>
right. You guys have a good day. Thanks a lot, and I hope to see you all on campus in the fall.